For the proof of this previous theorem, it helps to re-express the assumptions in the theorem in terms of a diagram. And the diagram associated to, this, um, to these assumptions says that we start off with assuming that we have a function on, on some domain B in RK. And what we do is we look at its graph. So we have to, um, so for every value of x, we looked at the points x comma gx. So what we'll do is we will have, there's this trick, whenever you have a variable and it's used in more than one place, you can duplicate it. And the way you duplicate it is through something known as the diagonal map. And all the diagonal map does is it takes an element in x, it takes an element in b, and it produces for you the element x comma x. That's all it does. And once we're here now, what we can do is we can apply, we can fix the first variable, for instance, and then apply g to the next one. So we can look at the identity cross the function g. And this is exactly what's going to give us our graph because the first coordinate is just b and the second coordinate is g of b. And then we can include this, if we remember that diagram, the picture that we had before, we had this rectangle b and the image of g and that rectangle was contained in the larger rectangle of u and v. So this is u cross v. And our function, so, and so this hook arrow just denotes the fact that this is the ordinary inclusion. You can think of it as the identity, but this is a different uh, domain, so we call it the inclusion because the codomain is larger than the domain. And then on u cross v, we have the function f from u cross v to rm. And let's just check to make sure where all of these elements go to be clear that this really is describing f applied to the graph of the function. So when we have this x, y, this gets sent to x comma, sorry, x, x comma x. This gets sent to x comma gx, and this gets sent to x comma gx again. Nothing happens under the inclusion. And then we apply the function f, and we get f of x comma gx. So this is f applied to any element on the graph of that function. The main assumption in this theorem says that this element here is equal to 0 in Rm. So if we think of just the 0 function that takes any element in x, any element in b to 0, then the assumptions in the theorem can be summarized by saying this diagram commutes. By assumption. So that means that here x gets sent to 0. So x gets mapped to 0. And this equality right here is the assumption that this diagram commutes. If you look at this diagram, every single one of these functions is differentiable. As a result, we can apply the chain rule. And what happens when we apply the chain rule? Well, this is a linear transformation. It just takes the vector and produces it twice. And so we get, um, if we wanted to, we can get a matrix associated to this, but we don't have to. D applied to a linear transformation is always that linear transformation. So here we have RK mapping into RK cross RK. And it's exactly this diagonal map again. It takes a vector V and produces it twice. Now this composition, we can just lump it all together as one. I just wrote out the inclusion just so that we're clear about um, what the ranges are, and that the range must sit inside of u cross v. So we can rewrite this linear transformation as a linear transformation from rk cross rk to rk cross rn. 
right? And the reason is because g is defined here, so all we have to do is apply the differential to g. And if we apply the differential to the identity cross g, that's just going to be the identity direct sum differential applied to g. So this is identity cross, or you can also think of this as a direct sum, as d at the point x applied to g. And then finally, f, well this is just d of f at what point? At this point here, x comma gx. And this goes to rm. This is the zero function. The chain rule says that this diagram commutes as well. And if we rewrite what it means, let's just look at what happens to a vector v when I apply this linear transformation, this composition of linear transformations. v gets sent to v comma v, and this gets sent to v comma dx g applied to v. Now it should look very familiar because the only le step left over is to apply the differential here. And when we apply the differential here, this gets sent to dx comma gx applied to this vector, v comma dxg applied to the vector v. And by commutativity of this diagram, since v gets sent to zero, we're running out of space here, v gets sent to zero, um, this implies that that expression is zero. And that's the proof. Amazing that uh, such a statement could be proven in such a simple, elegant way using just um, commutativity of diagrams and the chain rule.